Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CS News. First off, I do want to apologize for a couple things. My voice does sound kind of raspy. I got sick over the past few days, so hopefully the next week or so I'll be getting healthy and have better CS News episodes for all of you. But second of all, I do want to make a major apology for yesterday's episode. I reported on some fake news. Now, many of you guys are aware, over the past two years of this channel being active for CS News, we've had a few stories that of course have been reported as untrue. And yesterday I shared a story with you guys which was completely fake and misinterpreted on my end. So to refresh are you guys on that story and kind of ironic it's about Refresh Entertainment. They actually posted an interview with HLTV saying they would only be doing three to four events in the year of 2018. I misinterpreted this as Astralis Gaming only attending three to four events throughout the year of 2018. I align this because many of you guys are aware of Device's illness due to lots of travel, lots of game time, not a lot of rest for him. Uh, that was a, a, aligning with his illness there. I misinterpreted that their actual interview itself. If you read through the full interview though, this means that Refresh Entertainment, they actually put on the Blast Pro Series. As an organizer, they will only be hosting three to four Four events in the year of 2018. Now what's kind of funny about this is it's actually the exact opposite thing that I reported yesterday. I actually reported yesterday the fact that maybe in 2018 we're going to have a lot less events going on, maybe a lot less saturation, but this means the exact opposite of that. To clarify for all of you, it, the fact is this, if Refresh Entertainment themselves as a sole organizer can put on three to four events in the year of 2018, Who's to say that we won't have tons and tens and tens of other organizers out there putting on at least three to four events? We're going to see possibly in 2018 the most oversaturated year for CSGO events that we have seen to date, which is actually very terrible for the scene. If you guys are a believer of that, please leave a comment down below what you guys think of this. I know for 2017 it was a record itself. Over the past three years, we've seen it, we've seen an enormous growth of other hosts out there. Of course, we have all the gambling sites trying to host their tiny online events as well, but also the introduction of a lot of brand new leagues out there, and we already have eight to nine already steady organizers you know we have uh, as well as ESTA star ladder dream hack you know MLG of course e-league on top of that so many others out there alongside ESL pro league and ECS there are countless tournaments countless you know schedules going on and trying to correlate with each other we could see in the year of 2018 a record broken for the amount of CSGO tournaments and holdings and events throughout the year itself and this could mean a bad thing for CSGO so please leave a comment down below what do you guys think I know myself personally a lot of viewers out there do enjoy every single weekend having a tournament going on but we could see in 2018 every single weekend two to three tournaments going on or two to three you know tournaments every single every single few days so we're gonna it's gonna be a very interesting year for CSGO in the development wise but I do apologize for that fake news but also in some other CSGO news that's happened ever since then guys we do have to no surprise SK Gaming confirming their lineup for the year of 2018 as well talking about the upcoming year they have actually confirmed Phelps to be out of that roster whether he's on the bench or to a new organization we have yet to announce that but on top of that it will be of course former Immortal member Bolts for that 2018 roster they have finalized him and they seem very welcoming for him but they are still in search as of right now for a new player to fill in for the major after the major has passed though it will be SK bolts all the way to finalize that roster and now also talking about the major coming up in 2018 in January that will be the second e-league major I do want to talk about this as well because the big controversy out there right now that a lot of people have heard about but don't know the full details about is of course the the major ruling where if you qualify with the team you have to actually play with that team at the major if you do manage to qualify and even if you qualify with the team and they don't make it through to the major qualifier or the major itself you can no longer play the major with any other teams out there so that's the rule itself the rule was not really not we're not really sure the date exactly when that rule was put in place to give you guys kind of a background of this of course the current situation teams that are struggling with that SK Gaming currently looking for a player to fill in for Phelps they have made several notes they don't want to play with Phelps Phelps has also said he doesn't want to play the major with this team a lot of internal issues there but apparently according to Fox that was former Dignitas Fox he came out the interview as well and said that SK Gaming actually offered him the spot for the 2018 major if you guys remember back to 2017 earlier this year the same e-league major as well the first e-league major he also played for SK Gaming did quite well for the team he was actually offered that spot in 2018 for the for the second e-league major as well but he couldn't take it because he tried to qualify with Dignitas now of course Dignitas failed to actually qualify to the major qualifier and eventually the major as well for 2018 and therefore he is still not allowed to play for SK Gaming because he tried to qualify with a separate team now bouncing off this as well why people are so confused about this because it also we have an instance in 2017 as well where this rule was potentially broken. And that was with Disco Doplin, or Disco Doplin, however you want to pronounce it. He was actually formerly of Epsilon. Of course, he's been a, uh, kind of one of those wanderers of many teams out there. But he was, at this point in time, early 2017, before the first E-League Major, he was a part of Epsilon. They tried to qualify. They didn't actually qualify. I'm sure many of you guys are aware of that. But later on, mysteriously, he was playing with Fnatic at the Major itself. So many people out there, to K as well, other reporters and analysts are wondering, when was this rule set in place? Was this rule avoided at some major? 
features? Does uh, you know who actually controls this rule itself? And why could Disco Doplin or Doplin play for Epsilon at the qualifiers and then eventually play at the major itself for Fnatic? But we can't have someone like, of course, uh, maybe a Bolts doing that. Bolts also can't play for SK because he tried to qualify for Immortals. Uh, same with former Dignitas Fox. He played with Dignitas, so he can't play for SK Gaming. So why is this a rule being in place at certain points in the, in the history timeline, but why not other points in time? We still have yet to actually hear back from Valve about this, making a public announcement. No one has actually clarified where this rule came into place and why somehow Disco Doplin was the one person to actually avoid this rule. Now, I'm sure there's other inst instances in the past where other players have actually done this, but Disco Doplin or Doplin is actually the most notable actual case of this be of this rule being broken. So that's the whole controversy explained for all of you. And so why Bolts or why Fox can't play for SK Gaming, we still really do not know why. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, and again, I do apologize for the short episodes as of late. I was going to try and upload more frequently, but with my sickness, I just gonna I need to take probably a couple day break to actually recover here. But for our last story of today for episode of CSK News, I do want to talk about Navi and of course ES Force. If you guys are not aware of the background of ES Force, the company who is holding an actual partial ownership in both Virtus Pro and SK Gaming, as well as the media rights to Navi. Now that was as of a few days ago, where allegedly though those media rights were actually passed down to a separate group. So a lot of people kind of reacted to this saying, oh that's fine, that's great. You know, a company who actually had ties to three top top 20 CSGO teams not only has tied to two of those, well the fact is this, that their ties do remain because apparently those media rights were actually passed down to a group called the Zero Gravity Group and it's actually the co-owner of that group is a co-founder in Navi itself. So to give you guys kind of a background, his name is actually, I'm going to mispronounce this, Alexander Kokana. Kokonovsky. He's actually the co-owner of ES Force, and he's also a Navi founder, and those were the rights that were passed down to him because he's also a head guy for that Zero Gravity group. So for everyone who's reacting and saying, oh, finally, they're removing the ties there, no, the Navi media rights are still inside Navi. No one's actually clarified, though, his position, his holding inside that ES Force. Uh, everyone does still believe, though, as of right now, he's a co-owner of ES Force, also the Navi founder, and he still has the media rights to Navi as well. So he's still tied to both Navi and ES Force, which is, of course, still a conflict of interest. And on top of that, of course, they still have holdings in Virtus Pro and SK Gaming. So why this company has not been questioned by Valve or given a due date to actually eliminate those ties, like in League of Legends, no one is really sure why. Again, another thing that Valve has yet to come public about and actually try and fix. But as always, hope you guys all enjoy. If you guys did, please leave a comment or a like down below. I will see you guys on a couple days, hopefully with more daily CSGO news videos. As always, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I will see you all next time. Remember, I like you. Goodbye.